Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you're watching this. I thought I'd do a uh, short video today, probably be a short video, we'll see, um, on books. I quite often get asked, can I recommend any books? Um, and of course I can. This is my little book collection. I absolutely love books and I recommend anybody involved in the professions or, or, or anything, in fact, if, um, you know, just, just to surround yourself with, with knowledge and information. Have I read all these books? Of course I haven't. Um, I'll be absolutely lying. So I dare say some I'm not even open the cover of, um, but most of these books I've, I've, I've certainly had a good look through um, and if I need any information I pretty much know where to find it. Now this is not my entire collection, I've got books all scattered around the house and this is only my collection of um, construction related and building spam related books. Indoors I've got loads on joinery and farming and stuff like that because they're, they're my kind of hobbies what I do when I'm not um, being nerdy about buildings. So. I, from an early age, um, started with books, and the first the first ones I bought were the construction technology books by uh, Roy Chudley. I, I say Chudley, it might be Chudley, I don't know. Um, I bought those when I started my diploma in construction back in the early 90s. Um, a brilliant set. I'm not sure you can get the, the, the whole set like that anymore. It's now the Building Construction Handbook. So. My first recommendation would be this for anybody starting out in any form of construction related profession. It is a very good book. It starts with the basics, site setup, who's who, and goes through every element of the building uh, in reasonable detail. I mean, this book's what's pushing 750 pages long. Um, so it looks at ground investigations, site investigations, site setup, measured surveys, um, excavations, different types of foundations, different types of walls, floors, uh, roofs, intermediate floors, flat roofs, pitched roofs, steel frames, concrete frames, all sorts. So it's, it's a really good general kind of, of, of um, overview on, on buildings. So I'd certainly recommend that to anyone. Um, so moving on from that, um, some of these books, like those four down there were the first four I bought back in the early 90s. So they're the oldest ones that I've bought myself. I have some very treasured books. This book, for argument's sake, printed in 1906. This is the Building Construction Book um, by Charles F. Mitchell. I was given this by a structural engineer probably about 20, 25 years ago. A chap by the name of Eric Abbott from Beaconsfield. Um, he was a really nice old boy. He was about 137 when I knew him, so um, I'd hope he's still around, but that was quite a while ago, but really nice old boy, very, very knowledgeable, and um, kind of took me under the wing when I was uh, when I was young and, and still learning. And I've also got some the new Carpenter and Joiner um, books, dating from 1952. My granddad was a Carpenter and Joiner. He was one of, um, I think what you probably consider a bit of a rare breed now, that nowadays you'll have Joiners and you'll have Carpenters, and they, they're kind of separate, but, he was of the generation where he would make the windows and he'd go out and build a house as well, as, as I guess people did back, back then. Um, so, moving on, um, purely from a building surveying perspective, this is probably one of the best books I think you can buy. Uh, written by God himself, um, Malcolm Hollis. Um, this is on the fourth edition. I think there's a fifth edition of this. I'll try and find all my book recommendations and pop them in the links below. Um, but this covers absolutely every element of actually surveying buildings. So it looks at uh, the, the uh, general reporting, um, surveying equipment, all general ancillary stuff, and then looks in more detail, roofs, walls, plastics, metals, windows, um, dampness, uh, movement, timber decay, and all sorts. You can see this book is really tatty. Yes, I love books but there's no point in them just sitting there doing nothing. So this is one of my most thumbed books, which is why it's so, so flipping tatty. Okay, as you go on in life, you might not look at some of the books as much, so I might not pick this one up from month to month like I certainly used to, but it's there. And if I want to cross-reference something, I know I've got that information to hand. So I'm just gonna pop this to one side. <clears throat> Second on my, probably my all time, real information books is Diagnosing Damp by Mike Parrott and Ralph Birkinshaw. This is a really good book. It's a bit dated now. A lot of the equipment they use in here has been long since superseded, but nonetheless, absolute cracking book. And what I like about this book is it, it gives general information on 
overview of dampness, too many people just go straight to the issue. This is my problem. Can you sort it out? Well, let's look, let's look at the building as a whole. And, and he does that. So he looks at everything as a whole. But the actual teaching, if you like, is only half of the book. The back half of the book is case studies as to how you can get caught out and, and how, um, how really to approach stuff. Now, there is an update to that book. <laughs> it's around here somewhere. And it's, um, I'm not going to be able to find it because I just got these out of the cupboard. It's kind of a pinky colour and it's by Ralph Birkinshaw only. And it just goes into a bit more detail. Um, actually, I've buried a couple of books I was going to recommend. But anyone of an age will remember the Haynes manuals where you used to be able to pull apart a car and rebuild it. Well, they do a series of them that are... Um, you got, I've got the Victorian house manual, the 1930s house manual and the period property manual. They're good. They're, they're mainly pictures. It doesn't give a massive amount of information in them, but they are good just to have a flip through. And if you want to just, just cross check something. So again, fairly good starter books. Um, carrying on with the building surveying theme. I've no idea where I've got this. It says BRE on the back, Building Research Establishment. So I'm going to see if this is still available, but this is a brilliant little um, cross-reference book. I used to carry it out with me, so um, it actually gives you all different, it's rot and uh, insect damage. So it goes through all the different types of rot, all different types of mould, mildew, fungi and all that kind of thing, different types of wood-boring insect, and gives you a lot of information on each one. So again, a brilliant little cross-referencing book that I highly recommend. <clears throat> One of the newer books I've got is by a chap by the name of Pete Ward. Now, a lot of people might know Pete Ward, and I'll say that with a smile on my face because, um, how can I say this politely? He's, uh, I think he's known by a lot of surveyors because he's often quite having a, a bit of a dig at the RRCS. Um, setting that aside, this book is absolutely brilliant. I've recommended this book probably to more people than any other book. Partly because a year or so ago we were doing some external wall coating inspections for a company and um, these wall coatings were sold as being, you know, keeps the house cool in the summer, warm in the winter, doesn't crack and all this other um, sales BS if you like. Um, and a lot of the time it was caught creating so many damp issues because they said it was breathable, it said it was waterproof and it was just rubbish. So it sealed up a lot of old houses in plastic and people having damp issues. So this book kind of, I wouldn't say demystifies it, but it's just a common sense approach. Um, if you get upset people knocking the RRCS, then probably not the best read for you. But I think it's an absolutely brilliant book. Um, perhaps Pete himself might need a bit of education on all the different types of surveyor. You can't say we're all bad surveyors just because you've got experience of one. Uh, there might be land surveyors out there that are very good or hydrographic surveyors or antiquities and fine art, project management, uh, residential valuation. That we'll, we'll all do different stuff. You can line up something like 15, 16 surveyors and all, all completely different. Uh, even myself as a charter building surveyor, you could probably have four or five of us in a line. One does mainly project management, one's party walls, one's dilapidation, one's like me is building failures, building defects. Um, so we're all doing kind of different stuff. But... Um, Setting that aside, like I say, it's a really, really good book. I've recommended that to a lot of people. And despite the amount of knowledge in here, it's the princely sum of £25. So again, it's one of the cheapest books I've got as well. <clears throat> okay, so they, they, those three or four are probably my main building surveying book recommendations. I would probably, to be honest, recommend absolutely any one of these books. But they are, they're more kind of, a lot of them are starting to get more specialist. So I've got... Um, the housing rating system book. I've got quite a few on expert witness, quite a few on um, pure building failures. But a lot of building surveyors will get involved in contractual matters as well. So we've got some good books that are for, for general stuff. Construction Law by John Uff. This one was bought recently because one of our lads is at uni. But there's the, the version I got back in the early 90s, uh, or mid 90s when I was doing my HNDs and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a really good book just for general cross-referencing, but probably more for the academic side. If you're still at uni, buy that for sure, but you probably won't use it so much when you're out in the, um, out in the real world doing stuff. However, when you're out in the real world doing stuff, there's two books I would definitely recommend. If you're doing any work on building contracts, get Sarah Lupton's books. I've got two of these. There are lots of different types of JCT contracts, um, minor, intermediate and, and standard being the main ones, but then there's derivatives of those. Um, learn the hell out of minor works. 
Because once you know what you're doing with minor works, you can then apply most of that to the intermediate form. We don't do the kind of works that involve a JCT form. But I was told recently of uh, quite a well-known project in the southeast that had a value of 11.5 million they did on a minor works and hardly surprising they run into two issues. Um, but what this book does is it goes through the contract and sets out all the different elements to it, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't do. So really, really good book. And if we looked hard enough, I have got all of the pre-versions of this. So I've got, this is for minor works 16. I've got it for somewhere, ah, straight to it, minor works 11. And then I think I can see it there. Before that, minor works 98. So um, really, really good books. Obviously, I like the other so much. Every time it was up, the contract was updated, I bought a new book to go with it. So really recommend that. There's also scenarios that kind of, they fit within the contract, but not quite. So you want a bit more extra advice on them as to what to do. And this is a really good book. Um, we, we actually use this quite a bit in the office and we've actually got a digital version of it as well. But this goes through kind of standard or oh, quirky but kind of standard -ish issues as to, as to um, things that happen on, on projects. I'll open it up at a page and I'll give you an example. That's a really thick, big question. Um, what does practical completion under JCT standard form of building contract, sorry, when does practical completion occur under a JCT standard form of building contract? And then it gives you worked examples and quite often there's um, legal uh, references as to that under such and such a case this happened and all that kind of thing so that again is another another really really good book i've got some specialist books uh, i've got a whole set here from um the uh who wrote those <laughs> um heritage uh, english heritage um and there's a there's a set of 10 books or so and each one cover something different so this top one is um, renders and plasters and you've got one on glass and one on brickwork and, a, and one on general matters and things like that um, and finally I've got these three books now they are they was part of a, a set this one is a, um, appraisal and repair of building structures appraisal and repair of cladding and fixings and appraisal and repair of reinforced concrete now if you open the books up it says that there is also iron and steel, foundations, timber and masonry, but I cannot find those anywhere. So if anybody ever comes across those, I'll be very happy to uh, to look at buying those off you because I do like to have the whole set. Um, talking of the whole set, for example, these construction tech books, I lent out number two uh, about 15, 20 years ago. Someone never got it back. Found one second hand recently, but I had to buy number one to go with it. So I've actually got two copies of number one. Um, there is so much to learn. I keep saying to, uh, to our graduate surveyors, don't get bogged down in it, there, but there is a lot to learn. It's a lifelong learning. Nobody knows it all. If you come across a surveyor that thinks they know it all, they either do such a small specialist element of work or they are lying. Uh, I wouldn't profess to know it all. I think I'm quite knowledgeable, um, but this certainly helps. I'd recommend to any students, if you can, buy a book a month um, or buy a book that's referring to what you're doing at uni at that particular time. Um, if you can avoid complete academic texts like um, perhaps the construction law, although I'd recommend that to students because there's so much in there, you, you won't use it so much once you're out of uni. Um, but generally, I, I like to buy, I still buy books, I've got loads in doors still, so this is in my whole collection. Um, but there are times when you can't afford to buy a book, it doesn't matter, but you know, knowledge is, uh, knowledge is a great thing to have. And as I said right at the beginning of this video, I, I haven't read all these books. I've had a look through most of them. There are some that I haven't even opened, um, but I do know where to find that information. So if you've got any particular book references um, that you like, please let me know. I might not have them. Um, I'm always keen to, to buy more books. I'm going to try and find some of these main books, put them in the link below should you wish to, uh, should you wish to buy them yourselves. Um, but thank you for watching. I really do appreciate anyone who watches our videos. Um, it really helped the channel if you could like and subscribe and uh, I shall see you on the next one. Thank you very much.